Hello and welcome to Songs of One Breath today. And the theme I want to be working with today is the theme of guidance. I began with a chant um, using words from the Sufi mystic Hazrat Inayat Khan. Use us for the purpose that thy wisdom chooses and guide us on the path of thine own goodness. So Sufis talk about this guiding principle, the spirit of guidance, which arises from deep within us when we allow the space and the peace for it to do so. When we can quieten our minds and uh, somehow step off that um, spiraling hamster wheel of thoughts and instead sink into our own being and allow wisdom to arise from deep within us. So let's attempt to try a bit of that today. So just taking a moment to land in this moment, land in your body, feeling your entire body present here in this moment awareness of how you are contacting the floor how you are contacting the seat you're sitting on how your body is held and supported from underneath And we can allow our attention to rapidly scan the body from toes and heels and feet up the legs, taking in the ankles, the knees, the thighs, the hips, up the body, up the torso, paying attention to the fingers, the hands, the wrists, the elbows, the shoulders, the neck and the head. Bringing it all, welcoming it all into this moment. And as we pay attention to our body, our body might start to speak to us, might start to share some of its wisdom. Are there places that are feeling tight where we're holding on? If there are, let's send the breath there, just welcoming and including those places too. So I'm noticing my elbows right now, a little bit of holding on there. The base of my thumbs is often a place where I store a bit of tension. Surrounding that with a breath of love and compassion and inclusion. So allowing your own breath to go where it needs to in the body. The shoulders, maybe the hips, maybe. The knees the belly allowing ourselves to drop deeper into this moment allowing the wisdom of the body to arise in us and listening listening to the body And let's drop deeper into our awareness of the breath. 
So paying attention to how the breath feels right now. And following the breath on its journey from when it first enters the body around the nostrils. As it drops deep into the cavern of the chest to the bottom of the lungs. And as it turns around to exit the body And just observing this breath and what it can show us about our state in this moment. Is it deep? Is it shallow? Is it strong? Is it weak? Is it fast? Is it slow? Is it coarse? Is it refined? Not one of these things better than another, just observation, listening to the breath, the wisdom of the breath. And you might like to try bringing a question that you're holding at the moment, bringing it in to your awareness. And as you hold the question, watch your breath, notice what happens. And dropping deeper into the wisdom of the body, we can listen. We can listen for answers to our questions. And we can listen to the guidance that comes from beyond our place of questioning. So bringing in one of the breath practices of Lord Shiva that we've been working with over these last weeks. In truth, forms are inseparate. Inseparate are omnipresent being and your own form. Realize each as made of this consciousness. So our form, our body, our being is not separate from the omnipresent being. Each is made of this consciousness that we can call on as the spirit of guidance. Now 
our being not separate from the source of that being. Each made of consciousness. So I invite you to repeat with me this phrase, guide me to the purpose for which I am born on the earth. We'll say this 11 times. Guide me to the purpose for which I am born on the earth. Guide me to the purpose for which I am born on the earth. Guide me to the purpose for which I am born on the earth. Guide me to the purpose for which I am born on the earth. Guide me to the purpose for which I am born on the earth. Guide me to the purpose for which I am born on the earth. Guide me to the purpose for which I am born on the earth. Guide me to the purpose for which I am born on the earth. Guide me to the purpose for which I am born on the earth. Guide me to the purpose for which I am born on the earth. And one more time, guide me to the purpose for which I am born on the earth. So the spirit of guidance is like a muscle that needs exercise, it needs practice. And the more we listen for guidance and the more we act upon that guidance, the stronger the voice of guidance becomes. But sometimes at first we just need to ask and then listen. And sometimes nothing comes and that's okay. We'll ask again and listen again. So I'll just read you a few words from the Sufi mystic Hazrat Inayat Khan. The spirit of guidance is as the yeast which is used to make bread, to prepare humanity for the purpose for which it was created. The spirit of guidance is a plant that grows and blossoms when it receives response and care. And when it is watered by the rainfall of divine inspiration, it blooms in the light of the divine sun. The spirit of guidance is the light of God which may be likened to a lantern that the farmer carries when walking on the farm in the darkness of night. The spirit of guidance is like a searchlight. Any object on which the searchlight is thrown, it shows clearly. So the spirit of guidance thrown upon any aspect of life gives one a keen insight into it. In the spirit of guidance, one finds a living God active in the heart of every person. One who depends upon the spirit of guidance to guide one's life is guided aright. So I'm going to share a chant with you, which is something that I've used a lot in my practice over the years. Let me do thy will, Allah. Let me do thy will, Allah. Um, and then we, com we combine that with um, two words in Arabic. Ya Shafi, Ya Kafi. It's calling on the source of all healing, calling on the sufficiency, enough, just what we need right now using this as a practice to ask for guidance and then leaving space to
to listen, to hear the answers that might come. Let me do thy will, Allah, Allah. continue I'll show you some body prayers that you might want to put with these words um, so let me do thy will Allah we'll take our palms to the crown drawing down through the body this light of guidance and spreading it out um, into the earth oh, let me do thy will Allah Allah, Allah, let me do thy will, Allah, Allah, Allah. So you can stay with that chant as much as you want to, or you can choose to move to this chant of healing. And for this one, let's raise and lower our hands and send the light of healing as a blessing. So it can be for ourselves, it can be for people that we know and love, it can be for places that we know and love, it can be for all of our beautiful beleaguered planet who is in such need of loving light and healing blessings at this time. So something like this. Ya Shafi, ya Kafi. So you can sing along with me or you can stay with one or other of the lines as much as you choose and we'll sing them in harmony together. Let me do thy will
silence for a few moments let's listen let me do thy will Allah if you choose you can continue to repeat that with your breath or just listen So we'll close with one more chant and body prayer. Again, using this phrase from Hazrat Inayat Khan, use us for the purpose that thy wisdom chooses. Use us for the purpose that thy wisdom chooses. Offering ourselves as the, the agents of the divine God has no hands on earth but ours. And we'll also use this word in Hebrew, hineni, hineni, hineni. So um, this is the word that the prophets used to say when they felt the knock on the head <laughs> or the opening inside of the spirit of guidance. God calling upon them, hineni. Here I am, use me. Use us for the purpose that my wisdom chooses. Use us for the purpose that my wisdom chooses. in case you'd like to join with me and just a reminder that uh, word in Hebrew hineni here I am use me use us for the purpose that thy wisdom chooses so we're going to be um, we're sort of we would be if we were standing in a circle together holding hands we'd be walking to the right we'll just kind of walk on the spot but then we have this leaning and listening and leaning and listening so it goes like this use us for the purpose that thy wisdom chooses use us for the purpose that thy wisdom chooses so we're making ourselves available we're listening, we're offering ourselves, we're asking to be guided. And asking is such an important part 
of receiving. So the very act of asking opens the door for the receiving to be possible. So then we use the Himeni three times with our arms up to receive, to our hearts to receive from our inner guidance and coming down to earth to manifest this guidance to bring it forth in our lives. And if you choose to stand with me, then we can turn as we do that. So it looks like this. Hineni, hineni, hineni. And the other way. Hineni, hineni, hineni. So from the beginning, it'll look like this. Use us for the purpose that thy wisdom chooses. Use us for the purpose that thy wisdom chooses. In any, in any, in any. In any, in any. So I invite you to take this phrase with you into the coming days until we meet again. Guide me to the purpose for which I am born on the earth. Let me do thy will, Allah. Guide me to the purpose for which I was born on earth. Amen and blessings to you all until we meet again and may I say a thank you to all of you who are so kindly donating on PayPal it really helps thank you so much <laughs>